Hi, I'm Ollie Spacey. I'm a third year DPhil student at the University of Oxford in the Department of Biology, and I study mistletoe. I study how it spreads, how it interacts with the trees that it grows on, and what its future might look like in the UK. Even though we often think of mistletoe as these green clumps which have white berries here in the UK, mistletoes are extremely diverse. So there are 1,400 or so species across the world, mainly in the tropics, and it describes any plant which parasitizes a host tree, grows up on the branches and actually grows into them. So whereas something like ivy just grows on a structure and can grow on a tree, mistletoe actually penetrates into the host tree tissue and sucks out water and nutrients like a vampire. So the mistletoe we often see in the UK grows in a variety of trees, um, but only on deciduous trees here in the UK. There are mistletoes in Europe, which grow on conifers as well, but we see them only on trees that lose their leaves. So even though mistletoe is a parasite, and it can harm the trees that it grows on by stealing water, nutrients, putting the trees under stress, it's actually good for the ecosystem in general. It's actually considered a keystone species because it can provide berries for birds, it can promote biodiversity through nutrient cycling, and it also houses endemic invertebrates, particular species of insects, which only are found on mistletoe. So even though we often associate parasites with being bad, they can actually have really good impacts on other organisms. Mistletoe is not just for Christmas. Even though we mainly see it at Christmas, because that's when the host trees have lost their leaves, mistletoe stays there all year round. It's an evergreen plant, and so even though the host trees lose their leaves, the mistletoe keeps theirs, and that's why in the winter we see these strange clumps seemingly appearing at Christmas. It's why we associate it with Christmas time, but actually they're there all year round, and I spend all year studying them, even when it's not Christmas. Mistletoe has been associated with fertility for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, this goes back to druidic rituals where they would sacrifice uh, oxen and cut down a mistletoe from high atop the tree. These mistletoes seem to appear from nowhere and for hundreds of years it was a mystery as to how they got there. Now we know that their berries are spread to new trees by birds and that is how they establish without even touching the ground. But for that reason they were associated with fertility. It's thought that this is the main reason why we now kiss under them. Uh, this only started in the Victorian era when people started kissing under mistletoe as a tradition at Christmas time and traditionally taking a berry for each kiss that was stolen. You can even get involved in my mistletoe research by taking part in our Mistle Go project. This project is a trying to map the mistletoe all across the UK. So whether you live in an area where there's lots of mistletoe, not very much or none at all, you can submit records of mistletoe presence and absence to let us know what it's, uh, what it's doing. We're going to use this data to try and understand how mistletoe is spreading into the future, how it might be affected by climate change and changes in the distribution of birds which spread it. So get involved by typing in mistlego into the internet and all the instructions will be on the Tree Council's website. So my favourite thing about Christmas has to be I can go out and see the mistletoes for myself. So they're not hiding behind the host leaves anymore. I can go out, collect data on them and have a look at what they're doing. Um, but of course, with mistletoe, there also has to be wine. So maybe, maybe the wine is also one of my favorite things about Christmas.